A lot of food. A lot of food. So, well, now since we're into the Christmas, thanks, Lynn. You get it. Um, now, since we're into the Christmas season, uh, you get Christmas dad jokes. So, um, what do you call a Christmas wreath made of one hundred dollar bills? Aretha Franklin's. <laughs> And uh, what was the, um, uh, how does good King Wenceslas like his pizza? You got to think of the song. Deep and crisp and even. Even, yep, there you go. Yep, there you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, we're into December, isn't that amazing? Uh, we'll have the week off between Christmas and New Year's. Um, the office will be closed, but we should be running on normal schedule. Um, if there is snow, so um, what we do, and I believe that's uh, this has their, been their policy in the past. I meant to confirm this with Kim. I'm like 95% sure. If the Parkway District has a snow day, we will not be having class. But what they're going to try and do is flip it to a Zoom class on those days. So if you go to the St. Louis APDA website, um, and I do a YouTube, so I'm sorry, I said Zoom. It's actually, the, uh, I'll do a, a YouTube class that day. So as, as, if you have access to the internet, you can get on YouTube. So just go to the St. Louis APDA website. Um, you'll choose exercise class. And I think they're going to try and put a banner up so it make it easy to find. Uh, but you can follow along class that day. Uh, that's the game plan. But you guys know how technology works sometimes, right? Because it always works perfectly all the time, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Till you want to use it. So, all right. Um, I think that's all the announcements for now. I got something for you a little later on, but let's do some Tai Chi first. So, go ahead and stand if you are able and or willing. It's good to see you folks. Traditional Chinese bow is taking our right hand and making it into a fist, representing power. Taking the left hand, bringing the fingers together, friendship, tucking the thumb, humility. And the fist goes into the palm, and we say, welcome, or ni hao. All right, so I'm going to try names, all right? Now, this has been two weeks, so uh, we have Lynn doing her latest project. Um, Carl and Jim. Oh, come on. You've been coming here for four months. Uh, Glenn. Glenn, Gloria, Marsha, no, Gail, I'm sorry, Gail, Gail, Glenn, Gail, Jim, Marsha, Martha, sorry, Charlie, oh, starts with a W? V, Veronica, and Woody. Okay. Woody, Veronica, Charlie, Marsh, Martha, Jim, Gail, not Gloria, Gail, Gail, Glenn, Jim, Carl, and Len. I'm Craig, by the way. So, hey, and if I don't get your name right, you don't have to get my name right, okay? Fair enough? Whew. All right. Standing in the Wuji position, feet or shoulder or hip distance apart. Nice gentle bend in the knees, tuck in the tailbone. Head is lifted by the silk thread. One of the reasons I go through names is because I want to get better at names, but I want you to learn who each other are so you can talk and find out what's helping you and talk about your Parkinson's disease. Sometimes if you share it, um, that kind of halves a lot of the pressure on you. And so that's one reason why I go through and help you to know each other's names also, okay? All right, so let's do some deep breathing. Inhale, float the hands up in front of us. And exhale, float the hands back down. Inhale. And exhale. One more time, inhale. And exhale. Keep looking straight ahead as you do this. Push the hands in front of us next. Inhale to the heart. Exhale, push the palms forward. 
Inhale to the heart. Exhale, relax the hands down. Big, deep belly breath in. Long, slow breath out. Inhale. And exhale. Thank you, Lynn. I appreciate that. Inhale. I don't care what Charlie says about you. <laughs> exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Arms over the head next. Keep your feet rooted to the ground. Inhale to the heart. Exhale. Palms to the ceiling. Inhale. And exhale. Big, deep belly breath in. And long, slow breath out. Inhale. And exhale. One more time. We'll inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Keep looking straight ahead. It'll help you with your posture, all right? Arms to the side. Inhale to the heart. Exhale. Hands to the side. Fingertips up. Inhale to the heart. Exhale, relax the hands down. Big, deep belly breath in. And long, slow breath out. Inhale. Exhale, hands down. One more time, we'll inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Arms in the diagonals. Keep a bend in those knees. When you feel your weight starting to shift, try and bend the knees a little more. That helps sink the weight. Kind of helps, the Chinese call it rooting, R-O-O-T-I-N-G, like tree roots. And so when you bend the knees, it helps root the body a little more. So when you feel the upper body kind of shaking a little bit, kind of sink down. That lowers your center of gravity and will kind of root you a little bit to the ground better, okay? Um, and one more thing along those lines, since we're talking about it. Um, so you have, um, the, the feet has all kinds of nerve endings on it, right? Uh, that's why foot rubs feel so darn good. But there's only one Chinese acupuncture point on the bottom of the foot. And it's kidney one. They call it the bubbling well. And it's located like the ball of your foot is here. It's located kind of just behind the ball of your foot, behind the, I call it the long toe, the second toe in, not the big toe, but the next toe in. If you follow that back behind the ball of the foot before the instep, there's a spot right there called bubbling well. And that's the part of the foot that you want to root to the ground. So many people, um, like if this is the ground and this is my foot, they try and grab the foot with their toes. Um, and that doesn't work really well. But instead, you kind of push the ball of the foot into the ground, push that bubbling well into the ground, and that will help root your feet to the ground and help kind of stabilize you, okay? This also works really well for foot freezing, right? Um, when you're walking through the doorway and your feet start to freeze, you kind of stop and root and kind of sink down and feel that root, feel that ball of the foot kind of root to the ground. And then once you feel that, then you can kind of shift weight and start stepping, okay? And so these breathing exercises are a great way to practice that whole rooting behavior, okay? All right, so arms in the diagonals. Inhale, hands to the heart. Exhale, left hand up, right hand down. Inhale, hands to the heart. Exhale, right hand up and left hand down. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. 
Keep that upper body nice and straight as you do this. Inhale, one more time each side. Exhale, left up, right down. Keep that upper body straight. Keep the head straight also. Inhale to the heart. Exhale, right up, left down. Exhale. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, relax the hands down. Flap the arms like bird wings. Be kind to your shoulders. Big, deep belly breath in. And long, slow breath out. Inhale. Exhale. And one more time. Inhale. And exhale. And lastly, gathering chi. Big, deep belly breath in. And long, slow breath out. Inhale. And exhale, nice and slow. One more time, inhale. And exhale. And there you have it. That's our breathing exercises. If you want to take the breathing to a next level, uh, you can join me tomorrow um, at the end of the first class for about 1045. I do meditation. So if you haven't tried to do meditation, I highly recommend it. Um, I see it help people with tremors. I see it help people with their dyskinesia. Um, meditation can be very, very powerful, um, and it takes practice to do. So uh, we do that uh, tomorrow, 1045 to 11. Uh, we have a class from 10 to 11, the last 15 minutes I do meditation. So highly recommend it. Okay. Um, all right. Warm-up exercises, starting at the neck, moving down from there. First one, chin tuck. Try and keep that chin level so I look straight ahead, feel like someone's kind of gently pushing back on the face. Feel that nice stretch on the back of the neck, okay? This helps with that head forward posture that we sometimes get. We kind of bring the head back a little bit. It's going to help with our balance also, okay? So from the Wuji position, we float the hands up in front of us. Hands to the chest, tucking in the chin while looking straight ahead. Hands come out. The chin gently floats up. And sink the chin down to the chest. Again, we float the hands up in front of us. Hands to the chest, tucking in the chin while looking straight ahead. Hands come out, the chin gently floats up. And sink the chin to the chest. Beautiful. One more time. We float the hands up in front of us. Hands to the chest, tucking in the chin, looking straight ahead. Hands come out, chin gently floats up, and sink the chin to the chest. Let's do that one more time. Pay particular attention. As we tuck in the chin, you want to keep the chin level so it looks like this from the side. We don't want to be doing this, all right? And so it really helps to lock in on something directly in front of you, right at eye level. I know you don't want to look at me, but you can look at this, um, and that helps you keep that chin level, all right? So float the hands up in front of us, lock in on something directly in front of you, and then tuck in that chin, and that helps keep the chin level. There you go. Hands come out, chin gently floats up, and sink the chin to the chest. Beautiful. The other point about that is when I'm doing this and I tuck in the chin, notice how it lines my ear up over my shoulder. So it's uh, that's what we're trying to do. If I do this, I still don't have that good posture I'm looking for. And that's why we want to keep the head straight. Okay? All right. Next neck exercise, we're going to look side to side. We're looking over one shoulder, bringing one hand with us, pushing down on the opposite hand. All right? So prayer hand position. Tai Chi ball, left hand is on top. Palms are facing one another. Just turning the neck, I watch the right hand going over the right shoulder, look to the right, gently push down on the left hand. 
and come back to center. Back to prayer hands. Tai Chi ball, right hand is on top. Watch the left hand going over the left shoulder. Look to the left. Gently push down on the right hand. And come back to center. Prayer hands. Tai Chi ball, left hand on top. Watch the right hand going over the right shoulder. Look to the right. Push down on the left. Turn that neck, feel that stretch. Come back to center, back to prayer hands. Tai Chi ball, right hand on top. Left hand, left shoulder, look left, gently push down on the right. And come back to center, prayer hands. Tai Chi ball, left hand on top. Right hand over the right shoulder, look to the right, gently push down on the left. Come back to center, come back to prayer hands. Tai Chi ball, right hand on top. Left hand, left shoulder, look left. Gently push down on the right. And come back to center, come back to prayer hands, and relax the hands down. Forward shoulder circles. Double check, make sure you're in that Wuji position. Knees are bent, tucking in the tailbone, heads lifted by a silk thread. As we move the shoulders, try to not move the waist, all right? So bring the shoulders back, then up, then forward, and down. Shoulders back, up, forward, and down. Beautiful. Shoulders back, then up, then forward, and down. Now reverse. Shoulders forward, up, back. And down, forward, up, back, and down. One more time. Keep that head lifted by that silk thread. Bring the shoulders forward, up, back, and down. One more time. Make sure you keep looking straight in front of you. Shoulders forward, up, back, and down. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Next, we're going to gather chi, reaching for infinity. Feel the body open and expand. All right. So from the Wuji position, imagine someone's gently pulling at your wrist. Feel the shoulder and elbow open and expand. And then relax the hands down. This is nice and gentle, nice and easy. Again, we're gently reaching out, reaching up. Feel a beautiful stretch. And relax the hands down. One more time. Gently reaching out, reaching up. Feel the body open and expand. And relax the hands down. Beautiful. Now we'll open up the body vertically. So lifting the head by the silk thread. Okay? <laughs> Pardon me? Relaxing is a good thing. Relaxing is a good thing. As long as we do it safely, right? Prayer hand position. Left hand pushes up, right hand pushes down, stretching the spine. Float the head towards the ceiling. And come back to center. Make sure you keep looking straight in front of you. Right hand up, left hand down. Gently stretch the spine. And come back to center. Left hand up, right hand down. Float the head gently to the ceiling. Feel that beautiful stretch. Come back to center. Right hand up, left hand down. Gently stretch the spine. And come back to center. Keep that good straight posture as you do this. Left hand up, right hand down. Gently stretch the spine. And come back to center. Right hand up, left hand down. Gently stretch the spine. And come back to center. Back to prayer hands. And relax the hands down. That one is a really good exercise to help you with your posture, all right? Uh, sometimes with Parkinson's, you start doing this rotation, we kind of ro start to rotate forward. Instead, we want to keep that good posture 
and lifting that head up by the silk thread really helps, okay? And it's a really good thing Try it not only here in class, but out there in the real world throughout the day when you're sitting at your desk, when you're watching TV, driving the car, standing in line at the grocery store, making dinner for your wives. Um, <laughs> how come all the ladies laughed when I said that? Um, try standing, lifting that head up by the silk thread. It will really help you with your posture, okay? Next lower spine exercise, we're trying to not move the hips. We're turning the upper body from the left side to the right side without moving our hips, all right? So, prayer hand position. Tai Chi ball, left hand is on top. Gently turn to the left, not moving the hips, just the upper body. And then we turn the ball over, right hand is on top, and then gently turn to the right. Again, feel that nice stretch. Turning the ball over, left hand is on top, Gently turn to the left. Try to not move the hips, just the upper body. Turn the ball over, right hand is on top, and then gently turn to the right. Stay on the right side, turn the ball over, left hand is on top. Gently turn to the left. Try to not move the hips, just the upper body. Turn the ball over, right hand is on top and gently turn to the right. And then turn the ball over, come back to center, and relax the hands down. Beautiful. Pause for just one second. Hang on one second. Lynn. again today, so. All right, one more exercise and then we're gonna have a seat. A uh, great balance exercise and a leg strengthening exercise. So concentrate on keeping the knee bent and keeping the body nice and straight, okay? Use your chair to help you with this, okay? So we're gonna start in the Wuji position. Knees bent, tucking in the tailbone, heads lifted by the silk thread. We're gonna shift and bring all the way to the left leg with a bend in the left knee. And then with the right foot, touch the right toe next to the left foot. This is called a cat stance. Keep the upper body straight as you do this. Then tap right toe to the front, empty. Keep all the weight left, so I'm just tapping that right toe with no weight on it. And then I come back to the cat stance again. Concentrate, keep that upper body nice and straight. Tap right toe to the side, empty. And return to the cat stance. And then tap right toe behind us. Keep plenty of space between your feet. Probably just a little bit more there. A little bit more space between the feet will behoove you. You're fine, you're fine. And come back to the cat stance. And return to Wuji. Excellent. Excellent. All right, other side. Um, by the way, when we step back, we try and keep this space between our feet um, because we want this to be a habit for you. When you step back, we don't want you to step back and do this. Instead, we want you to step back so you have this wide base. So we're trying to build that muscle memory, okay? All right, other side. Weight shifts right, bend in the right knee. Tap left toe next to the right foot, cat stance. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you. Tap left toe to the front, empty. Keep a bend in that right knee, keep all the weight right. And return to the cat stance. Tap left toe to the side, empty. Keep that head lifted by that silk thread. Keep that good straight body posture. And cat stance. And tap left toe behind us. Keep plenty of space between the feet. There you go. 
and cat stance, and back to Wu Ji. So that simple exercise right there, keep practicing that. If you really want your balance to start to improve, try and work on that exercise a little bit every day, all right? It can really, um, your body's learning a lot of things there. It's trying to figure out its center of gravity while you're moving your foot in different positions. It's a really good balance exercise, okay? Any questions about that at all? All right, so let's have a seat. I should have gotten you a chair. Do you want to introduce yourself while you're here? That isn't why I brought you. I uh, had you come in. Just tell her you like Tai Chi when you see her, okay? Just, just tell her you like Tai Chi. So I work with Amanda. How long did we work together before you left? Yeah, so you and Kim are gonna be great together. Yeah, you guys are gonna be great. And by the way, I told Kim, I have, I know two very good tango instructors who would be perfect working for the APDA. And, and I've talked to them and they're, uh, so we'll get together on that at some point, so. Exactly, exactly. Um, anyway, so I uh, wanted to make a quick announcement, something going on with me uh, that you just kind of need to be aware of. So um, I've got a medical issue happening with me. Um, I have a tumor in my head. Um, it's non-cancerous, so it's curable, uh, but the cure isn't gonna be a whole lot of fun. Um, I'm still talking with doctors about it. It's called an acoustic neuroma. Um, so on it's on the right hand side, sorry. Um, so you have like a balanced nerve, a facial nerve, and a hearing nerve, and they're all like right together here. And this tumor is wrapped around all of those nerves. Um, so it, it has affected my balance, it has affected my hearing. Um, and I, I just recently discovered it. Um, so uh, I went and I noticed my hearing was down on this side. And so I had a hearing check and it's, they call it asymmetrical hearing. So I um, had an MRI and they discovered a tumor. And uh, so, um, so what my choices are is to do nothing, which really isn't a good idea, um, especially since it could become fatal. So I don't really think of that as a choice. Um, they can bombard it with radiation. They call it a gamma knife, um, but that probably isn't gonna work well for me. Uh, the recovery on it is much better than surgery, um, but um, I pretty much would lose hearing in one side if I did that. Um, if I go surgery route, I have a 50-50 ch chance of keeping my hearing on the right side. Um, and then, you know, wh whatever's happening with the balanced nerve and facial nerve also. So that's probably the route I'm going to go. Um, it, uh, the surgery wouldn't be in right now, although, there's a lot of things happening here. It's supposed to be a slow growing tumor. I don't think mine is um, because my symptoms have onset fairly rapidly um, where two weeks ago um, I could walk one foot in front of the other and be okay. Um, now I am struggling doing that. So I'm having a fairly rapid onset, especially for somebody who's got pretty good balance for, or I like to think I did anyway. Um, so right now, they're scheduling surgeries for this type of thing probably late January, but it might happen earlier than that. It just depends on what the surgeons need and, and, and what they find and, and you know when they can book out time. Uh, the surgery is pretty intense. It's six to 10 hours on a table. Um, it's one week in a hospital to recover. Um, it's two weeks under narcotics, three weeks I can't drive, six weeks until I can resume normal activity. And the one surgeon that I've talked to already said, he said, weeks four through six are going to be really tough on you. He said, you're young, you're in good shape, you're used to feeling good. He said, week four, you're going to start to feel good and you're going to want to do stuff. And he said, you cannot do it. 
he said, because of the, the nature of the surgery, he said, if you overdo it, if you build up too much cranial pressure, you'll start leaking spinal fluid into your skull, uh, which is like really bad. Um, so it's gonna be like six weeks, I can't do anything. Um, so the reason I'm telling you this is just so, and I'm, I'm just gonna update you this one time and let you know like when the surgery might be scheduled. Um, if you wanna keep up to date on it, I have a website, Caring Bridge. Um, if some of you are familiar with the Caring Bridge website, uh, it's a really good way to, that we can push information out to people. And that way, if you want to know what's going on, check in on Caring Bridge. I'll update you. Um, if you don't want to know what's going on, that's cool. And like I said, I'm, I'm not really going to talk about it in class. Uh, we're here for Tai Chi. Not This isn't Craig's health class or anything like that. Um, but, you know, it, it, it will affect you in terms of um, I'm going to have to make doctor's visits and everything, and before I would schedule my doctor visits around classes, and now if the doctor calls and says I need to see you, it's like, all right, I'm there. Um, and it may affect my ability to teach, so uh, we'll have to see how that goes, and it's just kind of uh, managing the symptoms. So I just ask for your grace, and if you're a praying person, um, I ask for your prayers, especially for my wife. Uh, Robin, thank you. Robin, yes. And my daughters also. So, uh, pardon me? Thank you. I appreciate that. Sorry. Kind of gets to you at times. Um, so, just, um, you know, if, if, I, if I can't be here, I just um, offer me a little grace. I'll do whatever I can to keep the classes going. And we have some good substitutes. Um, but the one substitute dentist who some of you have met, great guy. Um, his wife is going through some medical issues also, so we may have to cancel class here and there. So um, just please bear with us as, you know, we work through it and figure it out. So you, I figured this was the best way to tell you to have you come in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah, so um, if, you, if you go to the Caring Bridge website, um, if you type in my name, you'll see a picture of me and my wife, and there's a picture of me doing Tai Chi. And the, we named it uh, Craig and Todd's Adventure because we named the tumor Todd. It's just, it's easier to refer to it in third person as we want to get the Todd the heck out. Um, and if anybody has seen the movie Christmas Vacation, somebody has seen, Todd is the annoying neighbor next door that nobody wants to live by, that's Todd. So that's why my girls named the tumor Todd. Um, so it's Craig and Todd's adventure. Um, but anyway, so um, sorry, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna bring the class down. I'm gonna try and approach it with humor and grace, although sometimes it becomes a little overwhelming, um, but you know, it, it could be a lot worse news than what it is. Um, I don't like what it is, but you know, it, it is what it is. And, um, you know, I, I, I can't help but think, um, and I was talking with my wife about this yesterday, it's like um, seeing how my balance has deteriorated in just two weeks, um, I can't imagine if I wasn't doing Tai Chi, I would probably be using a cane to get around, I would imagine. I don't, you know, you don't know what you don't know. Um, but I can't help but think that Tai Chi is, is somehow involved in helping me with this and helping me get through this somehow. So that remains to be seen. Um, but um, any questions? Um, oh, no, that's fine. I have no, no problem at all. Um, it'll be done with Mercy. My wife is a nurse at Mercy. She's a cardiology nurse at Mercy. So if we go out of network, it gets really, really expensive. And this is, uh, it's a very intricate surgery. There's actually two surgeons. You have a neurosurgeon who will open up my head and create a pathway to the tumor. And then another guy comes in uh, um, who specializes just in this type of surgery. And from what he's described it as, he like removes the tumor one fiber at a time because he's trying to make sure he doesn't damage any of the nerves. Yeah, exactly. And I want him to go very slow. <laughs> so, and the other thing is my nerve, my, the, the tumor is kind of more central 
it's not out on the ear, it's more central, but it looks like according to the MRI, it's kind of laying next to the brain stem. So I want him to be really careful. So, um, it's, so you have three nerves. You have a balanced nerve, a hearing nerve, and a facial nerve, and they all kind of run together. Um, and it's wrapped around all three of those nerves. So he kind of has to unwrap it around those nerves. Um, and, he, and he said sometimes the tumor will stick to the nerve. And so if that's the case, they just kind of leave it. You know, they'll, they'll take off one fiber, but they don't want to damage the nerve as they try to pull it because sometimes it sticks and adheres. So, and he said the brain stem could be the same way. They, don't, they just don't know until they get in there. So, but it's a pretty intricate surgery. And that's why it takes so long to, to book out an OR for a whole day with two highly specialized people isn't an easy task to say the least. So that's one reason why it looks like it might be end of January, but with my symptoms onsetting, it might actually happen faster. I don't know. Yeah, I'm glad they did too. I'm glad it's not cancerous. Um, I've, got, I've got great family support. So, and my students are absolutely wonderful. I knew I noticed something was wrong. My hearing has always been fairly because um, I in my other life I do audio video systems and set up sound systems and um, my sit my hearing was uh, at one time was sensitive enough like if a microphone would feed back um, I could figure out what frequency it was just by hearing the frequency I could pretty much pick out what frequency was feeding back or if a sound system wasn't balanced right I could balance it pretty well by ear. Um, so I've always had fairly sensitive hearing, but I noticed this here was a little less, and then I started getting pain in the back of my head here. And I was like, okay, this is something more serious, I think. Yes. Yeah, I had pain in the back. At first, no pain, but then pain in the back of my head. And right now, like I have a dull headache, and I never get headaches. I mean, you can ask my wife, I like never get headaches. And so like I have dull headaches now, and Sign occasionally sharp pains, you know, that happen like back here or frontal lobe or something. So, and then it's like every day is a new adventure. Like my today, my 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 uh, legs are numb. Like you know, when your when your feet or your legs fall asleep, you guys know this symptom, right? Um, when your legs feel like they're falling asleep, that's how my legs have felt for the past two days. So, it's like every day is a new adventure. So, but you guys know how that goes, right? So we're all warriors together, right? Any other? Thank you. Everybody has their struggles, and we don't see them a lot. Um, but, um, and, and you know this more than anyone. I mean, you know, you can't, not everyone can look at someone and say, oh, that person has Parkinson's. Uh, but everybody you meet, there's some kind of struggle they're going through. Um, and you never know what it is. And that's why um, I always try and approach, you know, give people the grace and, you know, give them a little bit of a lee room. But, I mean, you guys are warriors. Um, uh, one, one gentleman who teaches Tai Chi, um, on World Tai Chi Day, a gentleman, I asked him, he's he's amazing Tai Chi. Uh, he, he doesn't do a whole lot of instructing. Um, he writes a lot of articles about it. Amazing Tai Chi guy. Very, very good, amazing what he does. And I asked him to join me at a World Tai Chi Day, and he knew that I had people with Parkinson's. And he's like, I've always approached it from a martial arts. How do I approach people with Parkinson's? He's like, I'm not, it, and, he, and he really struggled with it. Um, but it, the what he came up with was so wonderful. And, um, and he actually ended up writing a small article about it, I believe, um, that he said, you know, I, I go out and I practice Tai Chi for the martial arts and think I'm some big warrior out there. He said, but really the warriors are, 
the people with Parkinson's disease that get up every day and you know you have Parkinson's disease, you know it's not going away, and you know you can manage it, but you're the warriors because you keep getting up every day and you keep fighting every day. And truly, that mentality has helped me in my journey here uh, to go, you know, I don't like where I am, but I ain't going to change it. So I'm just going to keep fighting it every day. And I'm going to just keep, you know, you guys approach things with such a great sense of humor um, and such a great grace and humility. Um, you really have been an inspiration for me uh, as how I approach this. And so I thank you for that. I appreciate that very much. And I appreciate your kind words. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, my my father used to say sometimes when things were going bad, he said, sometimes you have to be like that jackass in the hailstorm and just sit there and take it. Like, all right, I guess that's where I am right now. <laughs> sure, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. I, didn't, I figured this was just the easiest way for you to, to know, so thanks for taking the time. So, all right. You guys ready to do some more Tai Chi now? All right. So. While we're seated, go ahead and stay seated. I'm going to turn on the music again. Thanks for giving me a moment to just share that with you. I appreciate it. And if you see my balance, don't think that I've been drinking or anything, okay? So when we sit Tai Chi style, we sit up on the edge of the chair, feet flat on the floor, 90 degree bend between the upper and the lower leg. So the knee stays right over the heel, okay? We kind of rock forward on the pelvis that helps straighten the back. And then we lift the head up by a silk thread. So we have good straight body posture in this direction and good straight body posture in this direction. All right. Again, I encourage you to practice sitting this way a little bit every day. This helps build your core up. This is going to help you with your posture. You practice your posture in the chair. So, excuse me, when we stand up, we also get to practice our posture, okay? All right, so hip exercises. We're gonna do a side-to-side -side hip exercise first, all right? So let's turn to the right-hand side of the chair. Excuse me, drink my water too fast, I think. Turn to the right-hand side of the chair. Now what we're gonna do here is slide the left leg out, but concentrate on keeping the knee directly over the heel, all right? So don't do this or this or this but we keep this nice straight line, okay? So we're gonna start with just the leg and then we're gonna add the, um, the hands, okay? So sitting up nice and straight and tall, left leg, slide that left leg out, feel that stretch on the inside of the legs and the hips, lower back, and then bring the knees back together again. Beautiful, let's add the hands for our hand position. Slide the left leg out, push against that imaginary wall on the right and come back to center. Push against the wall on the right and slide the left leg out. Feel that nice stretch, beautiful. And come back to center. Relax the hands down. Go ahead and walk to the left hand side of the chair. Good chance to say hi to everybody on the left hand side of the room too. We're going to do the same thing with the right leg. Let's try just with the leg first. So slide the right leg out. Feel that nice stretch. Keep the knee directly above the heel as you do this. And come back to center. Prayer hand position. Slide the right, yeah, right leg out. Push against that imaginary wall on the left. And come back to center. And one more time, slide the right leg out, push against that imaginary wall on the left. Feel that nice stretch. And come back to center and relax the hands down. And go ahead and walk back to center, shake the legs loose. By the way, I've already decided the night before surgery, I'm gonna invite a bunch of people over and we're gonna watch the movie Young Frankenstein. So go, go in with a sense of humor. <laughs> In the classic scene, whose brain did you get me? Abby, Abby who? Abby normal, that would be me. <laughs> All right, 
Next hip exercise, two motions with the leg, picking the leg up, pushing the leg down. Keep the back straight, keep the body straight, all right? So we're sitting up nice and straight and tall. Start with the left leg. Lift the left knee to the chest, hands behind us, keep the back and the body straight, and relax. Hands in front of us, push down on the left foot, hard as you can. Push, 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 and relax. Lift the left knee to the chest, keeping the back and the body straight, and relax. Hands in front of us, push down on the right, left foot, left foot, hard as you can. Push, 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 and relax. Keep the body straight, keep looking straight ahead. Lift the left knee to the chest, keeping the back and the body straight, and relax. Hands in front of us, push down on the left foot. Keep looking straight ahead, keep the eyes open, keep looking straight ahead, and relax. Beautiful. Other side, lift the right knee to the chest, keeping the back and the body straight, and relax. Hands in front of us, push down on the right foot, hard as you can, push down, push, 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 and relax. Lift the right knee to the chest, keeping the back and the body straight, and relax. Hands in front of us, push down on the right foot, hard as you can, push, 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 keep looking straight in front of you, and relax. One more time. It's best to keep the eyes open and keep looking straight in front of you, all right? Lift the right knee to the chest, keeping the back and the body straight, and relax. And then hands in front of us and push down on the right foot, hard as you can, push, 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 and relax. And shake those legs loose. You know, I just don't trust those people that put together the New Year's Eve party at, at Times Square because every year they drop the ball. <laughs> if I got any humor, it might affect it, but I'm sorry. It did not, unfortunately not for you guys. No, it did not. <laughs> All right, let's do our heel kick, knee exercise, four motions. Pick the leg up, kick the leg out, and then pick the leg back up. Don't skip this step, and then float. Don't drop the foot to the ground. Keep the back straight, keep the body straight. Keep that head lifted by the silk thread. It helps to think when you're lifting the knee that the head is being lifted simultaneously. That it keeps you from doing this or doing this, all right? So when you lift the knee, think about the head being lifted, all right? And when we get to the point when we do standing heel kicks, you'll want to be doing the same thing. You kind of lift that head just a little bit as you're lifting the knee. It's going to help you with your posture. It'll keep you from doing that rotation when, we, when our balance is challenged, okay? So hands loosely gripped at the belt line. We pick up the left leg, heel kick left, punch out the right fist. Pick up the left leg and float the foot to the ground. Pick up the right leg. Heel kick right, punch out the left fist. Pick up the right leg and float the foot to the ground. Pick up the left leg. Heel kick left, punch out the right fist. Pick up the left leg. Float the foot to the ground. Pick up the right leg. Heel kick right, punch out the left fist, opposite hand. Pick up the right leg and float the foot to the ground. Excellent. We're gonna do it two more times. As you come back from the kick, you wanna bring the foot up to this position and hold it for a moment, let the foot hover over the ground, and then float it to the ground, okay? Pick up the left leg, heel kick left, punch out, right fist. Pick up the left leg, let it float, and put it to the ground. Beautiful, pick up the right leg. Heel kick right, punch out the left fist. Pick up the right leg, let it hover over the ground, then float it to the ground. Excellent, one more time. Pick up the left, heel kick left. Pick up the left leg, let it float, float it to the ground, 
Pick up the right leg, heel kick right, punch out the left fist. And bring the right leg back, let it hover, and float it to the ground. Shake those legs loose. I just took one of my standing classes and had them do seated. And I, it happens every time. Um, when I take a standing class, have them do one class seated, and they uh, come back the next time, they're like, Wow, I discovered new muscles I didn't have after doing the seated exercises. So I'm really not giving you a break doing it seated, just so you know. Um, all right, toe kick, same exercise. The only difference is we were doing a heel kick. Now we do a toe kick, point the toe forward, stretching different muscles of the leg, okay? Hands loosely gripped at the belt line. Pick up the left leg, toe kick left, punch out right fist. Pick up the left leg, float the foot to the ground. Nicely done. Pick up the right leg, toe kick right, punch out the left fist. Pick up the right leg, float the foot to the ground. Pick up the left leg, toe kick left, punch out right fist. Pick up the left leg, float the foot to the ground. Pick up the right leg, toe kick right, good extension. Toe kick right, punch out left fist. Pick up the right leg, float the foot to the ground. Beautiful. Two more times. Pick up the left leg, toe kick left, punch out the right fist. Pick up the left leg, float the foot to the ground. Pick up the right leg, toe kick right, punch out the left fist. And then pick up the right leg, Float the foot to the ground. Beautiful, one more time. Sit up nice and straight and tall. Keep that good posture, make your mommy proud. Pick up the left leg, toe kick left, punch out the right fist. Pick up the left leg, float the foot to the ground. Excellent, pick up the right leg, toe kick right, punch out the left fist. And then pick up the right leg and float the foot to the ground, beautiful. Shake those legs loose. Good work, everybody. Good work. All right, ankle exercises. You want to do these standing today? Yeah, let's do them standing. What the heck? If you need to stay seated and do it, that's fine too. Whatever you need to do to stay safe, all right? I like doing the ankle ones standing if possible because as we're working the ankle on the left, that right leg is still getting some work also, okay? All right. Wow, she brings you water, that's pretty awesome. Weight's just right, bend in the right knee, left foot, touch heel, and toe. Heel, toe, heel, Toe, try to not move the leg, just move the ankle. Heel, toe, heel, and toe. Weight shifts to the left with a bend in the left knee. Right foot, touch heel, and toe. Heel, toe, heel, toe, heel. Toe, heel, and toe, and back to center. It's okay, you can hold on to the chair. The chair is not a punishment, it's an exercise aid, all right? So use the chair if you need to. Weight shifts right, it's not a punishment yet, I guess I should say. Weight shifts to the right, bend in the right knee, left foot, touch little toe, and big toe. Outside of the foot, inside of the foot, little toe, and big toe. Shift weight left. Now, don't look at your feet while you're doing this. Keep the body straight, keep looking straight ahead. Learn to feel what your feet are doing, all right? So with the right foot, touch little toe, big toe, outside, inside, little toe, and big toe and back to the Wuji position. Beautiful, that's our warm-up exercises. Any questions on those 12 exercises? All right, so we got time for one more. 
You want to do a leg exercise? Oh, well, let's do a hand exercise. We'll, we'll give you a fun hand exercise to do. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do two. We'll do an easy one, and then an exciting one. So standing in the Wuji position, we'll do the easy one first. So touch your thumb to the palm of your hand. Not to the finger, but to the palm. And then stretch the hand. And touch the pointer finger to the palm. Not to the thumb, but to the palm of the hand. And stretch the hand. Then touch the middle finger to the palm. And stretch the hand. Touch the ring finger to the palm. Stretch the hand, and then touch the pinky to the palm. And stretch the hand. Beautiful. Second hand exercise. This one's a little bit more exciting. Point your finger and thumb, make them into a nice circle, and then interlock the two circles together like it's a chain link fence. And then touch the tips of the other three fingers together as best as you can. And then gently push the palms towards one another and feel the stretch in the hands as you do this. And then relax the hand. You can rotate the fingers forward. That relaxes the hand. Then move on to the middle finger and thumb. Same thing. Make a circle, middle finger and thumb. Make a circle and then interlock the two circles. Make a circle. With the, there you go. Interlock the two tips of the other three fingers and then gently push the palms towards one another. This is a tough exercise to do. And relax. You're okay. All right. You just wanted to get closer to me, huh? <laughs> Ring finger and thumb, make those into a nice circle. Interlock the two circles together. So make them into a circle first, almost like you're making an okay sign between your ring finger and your thumb, almost like you're making an okay sign, and then interlock those two circles together, and then touch the tips of the other three fingers together, and gently push the palms towards one another. This teaches you fine motor control. Yeah, in a way, and relax. But I wanna show you something when we're done. So one more, this is the most exciting. The pinky and the thumb, circle, and interlock, and then tips of the other three fingers. Just do the best you can. It's not about being perfect, right? And then gently push the palms towards one another. So this is a really good one. This is teaching you fine motor control as you do this. But then if you relax the hands, if you look at your hands, they're pink, right? It's a really good way to increase circulation to your hands. Um, and I actually, I don't know if you're familiar, there's something called Renaud's disease um, where your fingers actually start to turn blue. It's because it's a circulation thing. And so one of my students had Renaud's and we were starting at the class, like the breathing part of class. And she was looking at her hands. I was like, Janet, are you okay? And she showed me her hands. And these two knuckles were about the color of your blue jeans. Uh, these two knuckles in her hands. And that's typical for Renaud's disease. And so I went through the two exercises that I just did with the hands. Her hands returned to normal color after that. So it's a really good way to build circulation in your hands. So when your hands get cold, um, or if you're doing something with like fine motor skills, um, it's a really good way to kind of work those hands a little bit. Okay? All right. Three cool down exercises. Lightly punch or slap the legs. Next, tighten up all the muscles in the body and relax. Tighten up the muscles and relax. And one more time, tighten up the muscles and relax. And lastly, we will gather chi, big, deep belly breath in and long, slow breath out. Inhale, exhale, keep looking straight in front of you as you do this, inhale, and exhale. Beautiful. All right, um, here tomorrow, same class, a level one class that ends with meditation from 10 to 11, and then we have a level two class from 
11.15 to 12.15. There's also yoga here, Pamela, Tuesdays, 1 o'clock. I understand it's an awesome class. I've met Pamela. She's got a heart of gold. Um, yoga is a good complimentary exercise to Tai Chi. Uh, so give that a try too, okay? All right. Have yourselves a great week. I'll see you either tomorrow or next week. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Probably want to go to the level one class, which is the first class from 10 to 11.